Yes, viewers, welcome to Google the TV. E-Learning Teachers Project Uganda is the platform that we are moving on. We are still in the era of COVID-19. I know each one of you has a story to tell now. Well, this is Obonyo Kenneth. I'm here once again for mathematics or level. Uh, today, I will not directly tell you what we are going to handle, but I want us to start it together and see how far we can move. Suppose, suppose I wrote something to do with this. I know most of you know what that is. You can see it is something that you know. But what you need to know is this. The whole of this that I've written is what we call a radical. We call it a radical. Everyone, we call that a radical. How about this alone? We call that a square. A square what? A square root. Good. Uh -huh. If that is a square root, how about the 25? Mm -hmm. The 25 is what we call a radicand. We call that a radicand. So we have said, once you have something to do with that, the whole of that is what we call a radical. If it is a radical, how do we call this symbol? It is a square root symbol or a square root sign. How about this number which was inside the square root sign? How do we call it? We call it a radicand. So all together, we call it a square root of 25. So the whole of this, Mr. Examiner, sir, is what we call the square root of what? Of 25. Now, if it is the square root of 25, what is the square root of 25? Someone is telling me 6. No, it cannot be 6. The square root of 25 is not 6. Remember, we are looking for a number which is being written twice. The same number which you multiply by itself to give us a 25. What is that number? Very good. It is a 5. Implying that the square root of 25 is a 5. But again, look here, Mr. Examiner. If the square root of 25 is a 5, we all know that according to one of the laws of indices, a square root of a number is either a positive or a negative. Wonderful. Implying that the square root of 25, Mr. Examiner, sir, will equal to a positive or a negative 5. Implying that the square root of any number gives us two answers. One should be a positive, the other should be a negative. But, Mr. Examiner, sir, one thing I need to tell these viewers is the positive square root, Mr. Examiner, sir, the positive square root, which is a 5, or the positive answer, which is a 5, is what we call the principal square root. We call it the principal square root. Now, if it is the principal square root, let us go ahead and look at something. What is that? Let us look at what we call rational numbers. rational numbers. Remember, there is something I want to introduce, but I'm first giving you a background, where it originates from. What are rational numbers? Rational numbers can be defined as numbers which can be expressed in the form P over Q. Numbers, numbers that can be expressed In the form, in the form P over Q, where P and Q are what we call integers. Very good. P and Q are what we call integers. And Mr. Examiner, sir, if P and Q are integers, again, Q, Q, 
must not equal to zero. Must not equal to zero. What do I mean? We are saying rational numbers. These are numbers that can be expressed in the form P over Q, which means the P over Q is a fraction. But in that fraction, we have a P, which is a numerator, and a Q, which is a denominator. But a Q should never equal to zero. Why? Because when Q is zero, for example, two over zero. Ha. If I go to my calculator and I tabulated two over zero, each one of you try out two out of zero, or six out of zero, or one million out of zero, what do you get? Uh -huh. I'm waiting for you people. Everyone in their different and respective districts. Two out of zero. You will realize that your calculators will not give you an answer. Most of your calculators will bring a mathematical error. Why do they bring a mathematical error? Because the mathematicians did not define two out of zero, or one out of zero, or six out of zero, or seven out of zero. What does it mean? It means that when the denominator is a zero, the whole fraction becomes meaningless. It becomes undefined. It was not defined. That's why we are saying in a fraction, the Q, the denominator, must not be a zero. Mr. Examiner, sir, back to the integers. We defined previously that integers are positive or negative whole numbers. They are positive or negative whole, whole what? Numbers. Very good. Now, if P and Q are integers, that is what defines what we call rational numbers. Now, after defining what we call rational numbers, let us go ahead and also look at irrational numbers because we know the opposite of rational is irrational. Irrational numbers. Mr. Examiner, sir, we are looking at irrational numbers. Viewers that have just joined us, you must be wondering what topic we are handling today. You are going to get to know the topic that we are handling. This is Obonyo Kenneth on Google the TV, sponsored by the eLearning Teachers Project Uganda. Teachers out there are watching this program. I know very many of you might be trying to criticize, might be trying to say A, B, C, D. Instead of criticizing, join the project. Let us teach these Ugandans. Let us make the project better. Let us move Uganda forward. Let us be the best country in Africa. Why not? Don't sit there and criticize. Come and join us and we move together. So, irrational numbers. What are irrational numbers? These are numbers that cannot be expressed in the form P over Q. Numbers that can't or cannot be expressed. Expressed in which form? In the form, in the form, P over Q. For example, which numbers? There are very many numbers which cannot be expressed in the form of fractions. For example, you have heard of pi, which is 22 out of 7. Eh? Pi, if you, if you got a calculator and got 22 divided by 7, it will give you 3.142. It will be endless. And you cannot express it in the form P over Q. There are so many other numbers, such as root 2, such as root 3, such as root 5, such as such as, we need very many others. Uh -huh. We have root 6. We have root 7. And very many others. Now, if we have all those numbers as examples as of irrational numbers, numbers which cannot be expressed in the form P over Q, we call them what we call irrational numbers. Someone else might want another name for irrational numbers. That name is infinite numbers. You can call it infinite what? Numbers. Everyone infinite numbers. Everyone infinite numbers. Those are numbers that cannot be expressed in the form P over Q. They cannot be expressed in a fractional form. Someone else can say non-recurring 
Numbers. That is again another term. Non recurring. Non recurring what? Numbers. Non recurring numbers. Which means these numbers, they are not recurring. They are non recurring. And let us get another collective term which we all understand, which I know most of you are waiting for. One general term for all those numbers. One term to mean irrational numbers. One term to mean infinite numbers. One term to mean non-recurring numbers. Is... SADS. This is the topic we are going to handle today. SADS, everyone. SADS. SADS. Remember, SADS is a plural form, while SAD is the singular form. S-U-R-D-S. I'm still upon your Kenneth on Google the TV. Now we are going to look at the different rules that govern SADS. What are those restrictions? What are those rules and regulations? When we handle linear programming and inequalities, it has its rules. When we handle menstruation, it has its own rules. When we handle vector algebra, it has its own rules. When we handle construction, it has it, oh, its own rules. When we handle kinematics, it has its own rules. Why not SADS? The first rule of SADS st states that root of A times the root of B, it will equal to the root of AB. What does this mean? It means that since there's a common factor of a root sign, we write one root sign. All of those inside, remember we call them the radicands. The number under the square root sign is what we call a radicand. We multiply the radicands. A times B to give us a B. We are going to handle each one of these one by one. Don't get worried. First write them down. The second law states that the square root of any number A with a bracket which is a squared, what happens? The root and the squared will disappear. And then we remain with an A. Implying that if you have the root of 2 squared, you remain with a 2. We are still going to explain that further. Number 3 states that the square root of A squared B or A squared times B will end up giving you A root B. We are also going to explain that one thoroughly. Number four states that the root of a fraction A over B is the same thing as saying the root of the numerator over the root of the denominator. We shall also explain it thoroughly. Number five, the root of A, I mean A root B plus C root B, we simply get the numbers outside the root sign. We add them together. And then we take one radicand, one number under the square root sign. Aha, uh -huh. root number six, A root B minus C root B, that when we are subtracting these sides, what happens? We look at the numbers outside, A and C, A minus C, and then we take one radicand, root B. Then uh, number seven, a root B, this is now a mixed sad. It has a number outside and a number inside the root sign. A root B times C root D. We multiply the numbers outside to give us AC. Then we also multiply the numbers under the square root sign to give us BD. Viewers, students, fellow teachers, parents out there, we are here moving forward. We are looking at the rules of SADS. We are looking at the rules and regulations that govern SADS. I hope you have copped all of them down. Now let us go ahead to the next subchapter. Simplification of SADS. Simplification of SADS. Simplification of SADS. How do we simplify SADS? How do we write them in a simpler form? Now, for any sad to be simplified, the radicand must be a prime factor or a prime number. Let me write that down. For a sad to be simplified, 
for a third to be simplified, comma, the radicand, that number under the square root sign, the radicand must, not should, it must be a prime factor, a prime factor, or a prime number. A prime what class? A prime number. A prime what class? A prime number. The back bench as you're just silent. A prime factor or a prime what? Number. Wonderful. I know some parents are very excited. They must be saying, I wish this was a teacher for my child. Please stop wishing and we study. We are all in quarantine. We are all in what? Quarantine. I started by sanitizing my hands. If you also washed your hands with the soap, that is okay. Let us join hands, kick COVID-19 out of Uganda. <laughs> this is a movie indeed. COVID-19 has become COVID-19. But let's struggle. We shall overcome it like the president said. Now, Mr. Examiner, sir, for a study to be simplified, it, it's radicand must be a prime factor or a prime number. Who can tell us what is a prime number? What is a prime number? People in Koboko, what is a prime number? People in Imbali, what is a prime number? People in Imbarara, you're not excluded. What is a prime number? You will realize a prime number is a natural number. I repeat, a prime number is a natural number. Greater than one. Having only two factors. One and itself. Ah, some people must be struggling to write. Some are using phones, some laptops, some are recording. I repeat, a prime number is a natural number greater than one. Having two factors, one and itself. Now, if that is the circumstance, let us have the first example. Mr. Examiner, sir, they want us to simplify root eight. How do we simplify root 8? To simplify root 8, we are going to look for two numbers, which when we multiply, we get 8. But one of the two numbers must be having a square root. I repeat, to simplify root 8 or the square root of 8, we are going to look for two numbers, which when we multiply, we get 8. But one of the two numbers must be having a square root. Mr. Examiner, suppose I said 8 times 1. Yes, 8 times 1 would be okay. But does 8 have a square root? No. Does 1 have a square root? No. Which means they cannot work. We need to look for other numbers. Which means we shall end up getting a 4 and a 2. Mr. Examiner, sir, we are going to have a 4 times a 2. Remember, we are looking for two numbers, which when we multiply, we get 8. One of the two numbers must be having a square root. Does 2 have a square root? No. But 4 has. And besides that, 2 is a prime factor. And it is also a prime number. Now, Mr. Examiner, sir, according to one of the rules that we got, the root of 4 times 2 we can separate them and have the root of 4 times the root of a 2. We are simplifying root 8. Those who have just joined us, stop coming late to my lessons. We are simplifying root 8. But again, Mr. Examiner, sir, the root of 4 gives us a 2. Very good. So we have a 2 times root 2. Do we have something related to this around here? Do we have it somewhere here? Do we have it related? Do we have it related? We have something to do with root A times root B. We have it here, root 4 times root 2. You multiply them under one root sign. But this time around, it's only one number having a root sign. Now, which means we shall end up having 2 root 2, which is our final answer. That means when we simplify root 8, it gives us to root 2. We have simplified. We have simplified. The radicand has remained as a prime factor. Let us try out another example. Suppose we are given the root of 
125 y squared. Uh -huh. 100, root of 125 y squared. Root of 125 y squared. You will realize, Mr. Examiner, that this will become the root of. We need two numbers, which when we multiply, we get 125. But one of those two numbers must be having a square root. What are those two numbers? You will realize those two numbers are 25 and 5. So we shall have a 25 times a 5. Then, Mr. Examiner, sir, times our y squared. Remember, we are simplifying. We are writing it in its simplest form. Mr. Examiner, sir, we are now going to separate them. So that we have the root of 25, uh-huh, times the root of 5, uh-huh, times the root of y squared. Very good. But again, Mr. Examiner, sir, the square root of 25 is already a 5. So we are having a 5. And again, Mr. Examiner, sir, the square root of y squared gives us a y. So now we are having a 5 here times a y there to leave us with a 5y. So we have a 5y root of 25 because we cannot be able to get the square root of 5. We leave it as a sad. So implying that the root of 125y squared will finally give us 5y root 5 in its simplest form. Let us go for a short break. We come back and do more examples. Obonyo Kenneth on Google the TV, e-learning teachers project, Trinity SS Navoero. I wish you the best.